Oh hi everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. So I'm Tim here at Digital Llama and today we're returning to the Janky Tribes of Magic and we're going to be looking at some horses. There's going to be a brief history and also a deck tech at the end. Before we get started, if you want to see more fun casual magic every Thursday and Sunday, please take a second to hit those subscribe and thumbs up buttons. Also please check out the channel's sponsor, Arcane Cards. They stock MTG singles, plenty of sealed products and have great shipping. You can find the link to the shop down in the description, as well as a code to get 10% off your first order. With that said, let's get going. So I'm back with another look at the Janky Tribes of Magic and this time around I'm looking at horses. Some say they're just a load of old pony, but I love them. So we begin with the original horse, Nightmare. Six mana for a flying Nightmare horse whose power and toughness are equal to the number of swamps we control. This mare has been reprinted 21 times from way back in Alpha up to the present day in the current intro decks. Homelands, the set derided by many players, brought us a few more equine friends. Black Carriage, Dwarven Pony and Clockwork Steed, part of a really nice looking but ultimately rubbish cycle of artifact creatures. Other notable horses from this early stage of the game include Workhorse, which has amazing artwork, Sacred Prey, featuring art from Rebecca Gay, and Zodiac Horse from Portal 3 Kingdoms, one of Watsi's early attempts at a beginner product. It was part of a cycle that included all signs of the Zodiac, as the set was heavily influenced by Eastern culture and history. Portal also brought us the keyword of horsemanship. It's another evasion keyword where the creature can only be blocked by something that has horsemanship itself. Quite a harsh mechanic, much like Shadow was in Tempest. Moving into more modern times, and we seem to get a horse per block. Cards like Timbermare, Carnival Hellsteed, Timur Charger, and Stallion of Ashmouth. Nestled within this period was a horsey treat, and I don't mean Ikea meatballs. A Chroman horse is a particular favourite of mine, immediately being given to an opponent, and then you start getting one on soldiers, just like Greek mythology. Now we're up to standard sets and the card that prompted this whole video, Crested Sunmare. I've been shoehorning this card into decks left, right and centre. If you've gained life in a turn, you get a 5-5 token and with the Sunmare in play, they're indestructible. Two Sunmares down and they make each other indestructible for even more shenanigans. It was very much at home in my cat deck as so many of them had lifelink and now with Core Set 19, there's a much more on theme solution. Before we get to that though, Unstable. It brought us just an ordinary pony. It's basically a blink pony and you can pair it up with some crazy stuff. So that leads us to M19 and the Mare Cycle. Most of them are unblockable by a single changing colour and each horse has a different ability after that. The Shield Mare gains us 3 life each time it's targeted by an opponent. Whenever the Surge Mare deals damage to an opponent we can loot and can switch up its power and toughness a bit. Plague Mare gives our opponent's creatures minus one minus one for the turn. Lightning Mare is uncounterable and has slightly pricier fire breathing. Vine Mare has Hexproof and is currently wrecking moderate havoc on standard when comboed with Captain's Hook. That means it can't be blocked by anything, which is a right mare for our opponents. The final horse is Colourless, Diamond Mare. As it enters play, you pick a colour, then any time you play a card of that colour, you gain one life. So with the history lesson out of the way, let's build a deck. Now this deck is currently standard legal, but only for another month or so. After that, it will be strictly kitchen table or even frontier. We've got a fairly big horse package, four of the main mare himself, backed up by four diamonds and shields, and also four metallic mimics. If those horse tokens start coming into play with plus one plus one counters on them, then that'll be awesome. With our horses naturally being earthbound, we need some protection from aerial attacks. 
four harvesters and a few Sarah's wings should do it. And as bonus, they will help with the life gain. Next are a couple of cards that will shut down certain decks and give us some incremental life in the process. Three authorities and two ashes should do it. A two of for anointed procession should do nicely as well. We're not an out and out token build, but double Sunmare tokens each time is nice. Finally, there's the removal suite. Ixalan's binding, seal away, and a couple of settles is what we need in here. That leaves space for 23 lands. Feel free to throw in a monument or two, or even a field of ruin. It's all meta dependent. What you could also do is try to squeeze in a Lyra or two in place of the ashes if you've got them. And there you have it, my guide to the janky horses of magic. If you haven't already, please remember to share this video wherever you hang out, be it Twitter, Reddit, Facebook, and don't forget to subscribe, and then head over to Arcane Cards for your MTG singles. Thanks so much for watching, catch you all on the next one. Cheers!